people will often ask me, hey, how can I make a difference, which sounds a bit cliche, but I think we all know what it's like to, to really want to contribute to the conversation. I, I have a, a voice, I have an opinion, I have something I want to say, I want to be a part of the solution instead of just griping about the problems. And what I will often say to them is, what are your gifts? What do you do? What do you do well? Not everybody's a podcaster. Not everybody does this, like David Smalley. <laughs> and Seth Andrews, and many of us up here on stage. Uh, I have people who are artists. They draw, they paint, they create. They're organizers. They're good at organizing. They're good at delegating. They're good at all of these specific things. I'm like, well, find out whatever you're good at and whatever you're passionate about and find a way to use that to benefit the conversation out there. And I think one of the things that we need to be doing more of is being able to use the arts, a wonderful tool that, that's a storytelling tool that relates to people and connects with people on so many levels. We don't have a lot of atheist or secular, overtly secular, people who are sort of on the front lines of activism, secular artists out there. And that landscape is starting to increase and improve. But we are so tremendously privileged to have our next guest out there making music and sharing, if I may, an angelic voice and, and providing so much wonderful stuff to so many people. Many of you don't know this, but you know, you probably have heard that you know artists don't they do what they do because they're passionate about it shelly's one of those people if you love shelly's stuff she's making all of her her music available on a new patreon thing where you can have access to everything from the albums to home recordings to whatever by supporting her on the cheap it's just patreon.com slash shelly siegel that is a way for us to get behind her and support her because her music speaks about the stuff that you and i speak about verbally it talks about the human condition, it talks about real life, it talks about relationships, it talks about the stuff that resonates us with not just atheists, but as human beings and as humanists and people who want to make the world a better place. I'm honored that she's a part of our 300. Would you please help me welcome Shelley Siegel. Thank you so much, Seth. That was really beautiful. And uh, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here and to celebrate Seth's great achievement of 300 shows and be part of it and to share today with you. Uh, it's possible because now I am a new resident of the United States. <laughs> which I timed really well. <laughs> I spent election night at um, Cantor's Deli in LA and uh, there was like a rock band playing and they had the election on in the bar and the musicians were just getting more and more despondent <laughs> as the evening <laughs> went on. But I was so glad to be there. And I was so glad to be listening to music and they kept playing and they, they played through it. And I feel like all the times that I need some comfort or I need some strength. Uh, music is there for me to listen to and absorb or to create and express myself. And uh, yeah, so I really appreciate what, um, what Seth was saying about that and using your gift. And listening to, um, to Aaron speak about God and uh, the, you know, the characteristics that the God that contains within yourself reminded me of a song by a atheist rock band, Monster on Sunday. Does anyone know those guys? Yeah. Um, they have a song called Just Like You. Your God is just like you. And uh, yeah, that, that really resonated. So I'm going to play my songs. And I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm going to start with... Um, with a happy love song. This one is called My Word. My 
way My way My way I give you my word On it you can build your dreams I give you my word so I'm back together at the seams. I give you my word. Ain't never gonna be no diamond ring, but honey, my word. Yeah, it's the strongest thing. I wanna tell you in a beautiful, complicated way to show you how it feels. But the words on their own hit straight to the bone. My way, my way, my way. I give you my time. On it, you can set the pace. I give you my time, give you my growing old, my changing face. I give you my time, which I can never refuse. Give you my time, cause you give me that thrill. But the day, day. I wanted to dress it up nice and pretty fairy lights to show you how it feels. But the words on their own hit straight to the bone. My way. My way. My way. In 2013 when we played uh, we did a show together in San Antonio and that was my introduction to the thinking atheist and the, the way that I got involved with the secular movement was I was brought up in a Jewish community and uh, I became an atheist about 18 19 and I started to write about my experiences and I made an album called an atheist album and I thought that it was something really powerful to associate the worldview without God, an atheist worldview, with something positive like art and music and something creative and something beautiful. Because when I had been a believer, I saw an atheist worldview as being cold and detached, you know, disengaged from the world and passionless. Of course, I find that to be <laughs> completely untrue. In fact, the opposite, because I'm really engaging with the world now and I want to know what is actually true because I want to engage with the world as much as I can. And, and so 
I got involved in the secular movement. And um, since being introduced to Seth and his work, I've traveled around the country, I've performed for secular communities, and I've met countless, countless people who have been really impacted by what Seth does, by sharing his stories and by sharing the stories of people who have been through something similar and educating us and, and um, it's, it's something really amazing. So congratulations, Seth. And, uh, and something I've seen at the communities and conferences that I've been to with the secular and atheist communities is that they're including more music and more art and more cultural elements, which I think is something really positive and gives us that full spectrum of approaches and voices to, um, you know, to really talk about what's important to us and express ourselves. And when I play a show at a bar, at a public bar, sometimes in Louisiana or Tennessee, <laughs> um, you know, I play a few songs first that are more love songs, more kind of approachable to everybody. And then I will... Um, I'll play a song where I talk about my beliefs. And there's one song I wrote that was a response to an argument I've had many times where people find out that I'm an atheist. And they say, well, how do you know how to be a good person without God? And they say, how do you know the difference between what's right and what's wrong without a book to tell you? And uh, what's great about music is that it can be an uninterrupted opinion, <laughs> which uh, you know is very rare <laughs> to have these days. And so this is my four-minute uninterrupted opinion, unless there are any hecklers, uh, of how I know how to be a good person without God and how I know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. The song is called My Morality. My morality has nothing be 
basically not to hurt anybody. But poor as any brutality stemmed from our common humanity. And it's what my grandmother taught to me. And it's mine because I'm Thank you so much. So it's really fun to sing those kind of things out loud at a bar in, um, in Texas. <laughs> you know, people are, it's like, it's like, it's a switch in ba uh, bait and switch, so you know, like you're pulling people in with a pretty voice and then you're like, here's my idea. <laughs> and you see people listening at a bar again and, what, what did she say? <laughs> It's fun. I think people find it easier to hear an opinion in, in that uh, medium rather than, you know, if you're going to straight out criticize them. Just disguised with a pretty voice. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce Rob, who's going to be joining me on the guitar. And we're going to play a song from my upcoming EP, which uh, is going to be ready in the next couple of months. And uh, this is a song about someone trying to get in the way of a relationship. Uh, when I was 18, and in my first relationship ever, uh, my father told me that I needed to break up with my partner because he wasn't Jewish. And I think there's so many reasons why people try and interfere in a relationship, um, whether it be religion or race or gender or sexuality. Um, people feel like they can come in our lives and control who we love and how we love. But the truth is that you can't. You can't control that. And uh, I was, we were all very happy in Australia when you guys uh, made marriage equality a reality. We had rainbow flags everywhere. We haven't done that ourselves. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, hopefully we continue our fight for civil rights. This song is called Somebody Like You. Must be up real high to get 
Thank you. My family, as I mentioned before, were Jewish. Uh, and they would probably describe themselves as traditional Jews. We, um, we celebrated all the festivals and we went to synagogue every week and we kept the dietary laws. So they would call themselves traditionals. I would probably call them medium Jews. <laughs> so <laughs> medium level of observance. Uh, but the synagogue that we went to each week was an orthodox synagogue. And so that was um, you know, a well done Jew. But more uh, intense Judaism than, than what we had at home. Uh, we had gender segregation at the synagogue. So the women would be upstairs and the men would be downstairs. And as a woman, you weren't allowed to participate in leading the service. You weren't allowed to read from the Old Testament, uh, which is you know, the center of the whole service. A woman's voice in Orthodox Judaism is not allowed to be heard unaccompanied because it's too arousing, which is true. <laughs> So if anyone feel, feels overcome at any time, we have exits <laughs> behind you. <laughs> Three exits on each side. <laughs> um, in Orthodox Judaism, men and women aren't allowed to touch. Uh, so my family rabbi would come to my family home and shake my brother's hand and shake my father's hand and hi Shelley. You know, and if you had a cool rabbi, you could have an air high five thing going on. But um, you can't have that same intimacy or that same level of friendship because of something you have no control over, your gender. Uh, the school that I went to was a Jewish day school. And that was more of a traditional, more medium level of observance. Uh, but even there, we were given, you know, very strong messages about what it meant to be a woman in Judaism. Uh, every morning we said prayers from primary school. I remember saying uh, this one prayer in the morning that was a call and response between the boys and the girls and uh, one line in particular where the boys would say in Hebrew, dear God, thank you for not making me a woman. And we would answer back, dear God, thank you for making me what I am. And this was explained, all these things were explained away to me by women in my community who said that it's not that we're less, it's not that we're worse, it's just that we're different. But different is still defined and I absolutely refuse to be defined by my gender. And this next song talks about the way that the Abrahamic traditions and their liturgies talk about women and define women and their roles. This song is called Eve. The Bible tells me I was made for and from man. And I must do for him everything that I can. I must surrender to his will I must submit I can't make the household decisions cause I am unfit it tells me my place with everlasting grace the Bible tells me I must be silent, you can't hear my voice My role has been divinely defined And I have no other choice I may not be teacher of man I must cover up my shame These are the laws of the one who in vain I cannot name He tells me my place
touch me and it has nothing to do with where I've been it is part of who I am it is because I corrupt man I was asking for it just by being a woman he inspired uh, by a discussion I had about recycling with <laughs> with someone who uh, you know was Orthodox Jewish and they said that they didn't need to recycle because God made the world for us and the world will be here for as long as God wants it to be and there's nothing that we can do that will interfere with God's plan. And so we don't need to recycle. And I think that's one of the many dangers that are inherent in a worldview that focuses on an afterlife instead of this life. And so this song talks about some of those dangers. Follow the guidebook for an after life which one do I try which one do I try I would I'd like to believe that I'll never die but I can't comply no I can't comply all the self-appointed representatives are their own imaginings in the sky. They want to usher in the messianic age. They don't mind if it's brought on by nuclear rage. They are so sure of their ability to outlive the utility of their bodies. But just remember there was the last thought in the brain of every suicide bomber and every hijacked plane. Follow the God book for it.
die. It's not a pleasant photo, but the way that I deal with it is to treasure each moment with my surroundings and those that I love. I spend my days trying to engage with the world to learn as much about everything as I can. Using the body of knowledge, which I'll share heritage to further understand the historical and evolutionary context of man. To hold revelation in a higher place is to spit in the face of those who chose to dedicate their lives to enrich our own. Follow the guidebook for an afterlife. Which one do I try? Which one do I try? I would like to believe I'll never die, but I can't comply. Thank you. Uh, that last section of the song, for those who don't speak Hebrew, <laughs> few in the room, uh, that was, used to be one of my favorite prayers. And it talks about the angels of peace. And I, I use my magic Hebrew skills for one of the few times that they've been very helpful. No, I'm very grateful that I know another language. <laughs> um, to do a play on the words where I changed the prayer from saying the angels from God to saying who is God, who is God, I am God. And uh, this next song is for Seth. Um, Seth said he, he really likes it. And uh, last year I got to go on the Thinking Atheist podcast, which was a real pleasure, and it was interesting seeing some of his fans' comments in the video section. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to read the comments. <laughs> Someone was saying that they thought, because we did um, like a, a live video stream so people could see us at the same time, and everyone, a couple of people said that you were looking really buff, Seth. So <laughs> someone told me, someone said, I hope she has a day job. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's nothing. <laughs> but this is one of the songs that Seth asked me to play on the podcast, so I'd like to dedicate it to, to him tonight. And it's about... Well, I, I wrote it when I was sitting in my room and I heard this spooky noise outside. And this was when I recently you know, started questioning, it, questioning everything. And I heard this noise and I thought, I'm so glad that I don't believe in ghosts anymore. Because I would have been afraid. You know? But it was my deeper understanding of the world that meant I didn't have to be afraid. And it reminded me of, uh, of that experience of losing my faith because while initially that was very scary and challenging time, it ultimately became one of the most significant and empowering experiences of my life because I realized that I had to depend on myself. I had to learn to rely completely on myself, obviously friends and family if you're lucky to have them, but that you have to develop this inner strength because there's not someone that you can just you know, call on at any time and ask for help. And so it, it felt amazing in that moment to realize that I had that strength and I found that strength and I didn't need to be afraid in, in a lot of areas in my life. And, uh, and, and also to compare the idea of a deity which had been so huge in my mind, so elevated and important with something so childlike and imaginary like ghosts. And to be able to say that out loud. And uh, this is called I Don't Believe in Fairies. Uh. 
I don't believe in fairies. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in vampires hungry for our throats. I don't believe in demons or witches that can fly. I don't believe in dragons. I think they're all alive. So when I'm in the dark, I'm not a Imaginations have made. I don't believe in Adam. I don't believe in Eve. I don't believe in talking snakes. I think they're. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in Allah. I think they have no use. So when I'm in the dark. a bit over time. Is that okay? We... We've got a few minutes. A few more minutes. All For right, you, cool. we've got all the time in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Thank you for giving people a space to say that stuff out loud, you know, to be blasphemous and to, you know, explore their thoughts. Yeah. This is my most blasphemous song. <laughs> No, no, um, I wrote this after 
I spoke to a preacher in the street and he told me very nicely that I was going to hell <laughs> and that I was going to burn forever. And this song says, I will not be told how to live my life. This song is called Saved. Thank you again, Seth, for bringing us out here. We're really proud and happy to be part of today. And thank you, Rob. And 
and I'd like to dedicate this song to Holy Kool-Aid, who postponed his trip to Thailand to be here for today, so that was pretty cool. This song is about the end of the world. <laughs> hey, a lot of people used to believe, and some still do, that we are the center of the universe. But actually, the universe is a pretty cold and uncaring place. And uh, it seems to be more so that way the more we find out about it. There's um, the impending heat death, <laughs> our galaxy heading towards another galaxy. It doesn't look good. <laughs> so uh, I would say that that's enough to claim that we are cosmically insignificant. The universe will not hear our cries into the night. But at the same time, we have what I call our real world significance because the way that we are towards each other, the way that we are towards ourselves, the beliefs that we hold in our mind, the way that we think, the way that we treat each other and ourselves, um, the way we speak to each other and ourselves has a profound impact in this world right here and right now. And I think that is the most meaningful and the most significant thing. And to me, that's an answer to any fear or despair that that cosmic insignificant may cause. We have the meaning, we create the meaning, we are the meaning. And I'm so happy to be here with you and have a chance to share my music with you. So thank you very much for having me. This is called Apocalyptic Love Song. <laughs> One day, the sun is going to die. For us, it means no more sunsets to the universe, just one less star in the sky. And almost all who ever lived have already died. Count the stories of love and war and hope and pain now silently side by side and yes I understand that my whole life is just a blink of an eye and the history of the earth is with each moment that goes by but this moment One billion years, the oceans will dry While somehow life may continue It will not be known to you and I To think we are so important Is an obvious crime We know that we are specks on a tiny dot hurtling through space and time and yes I understand that my whole life is just a blink of an eye the history of the earth is with each moment that goes by but this moment that I'm with you it feels like Thank you very much.